Hello and welcome to Nova Southeastern University Sports Beat. Mike Laderman here with the good Dr. Pat Thiele. And class, take out your number two pencils because we're going to have a test today, a little pop quiz. And the quiz is on just what are the chances, or what are the odds, I should say, of the baseball and softball teams advancing way through regional tournaments and going to possibly nationals. And Pat, I'm going to start this test out with you. Okay. You know these teams as good as anybody. Let's start off with baseball. What are their chances of getting out of the regional tournament and going to the NEIA National Championship Tournament? I would say the chances are good. We're probably going to go in as a number two seed behind Bruton Parker, so expectations will be high with the high seed. But I think if we get the timely hitting with the pitching that we have, we should be in great shape. Hey, it helps having that automatic berth too into the regional, sure, doesn't it? Sure. I mean, th this is something you know that that two years ago they, they make it there. Uh, they really want it. They were hungry, and all of a sudden the hitting stopped. So let's let's start talking about the hitting at first, because this year's team a little different than uh, that that team uh, two years ago, and also different than the team from last year, the team that slumped last year when they went into the conference tournament. This year, knowing that they're automatically going into the regional tournament, we got guys that know how to hit the ball, and I don't think they're worried too much about. That. No, I don't think so. I mean, if you look at the lineup one through nine, you've got what six guys hitting over 300, or you know, right about that. Well, you know, Charlie Vaughn at uh, 299, yeah. but you got to put him in the 300 club. So, I mean, we've got the guys that can hit. We got the Claude Loves, the Brian Norris, the Brian Garrities. Those guys are going to come through for you. Maybe a little slump right now. But uh, maybe, you know, a few days off, a little rest going in, I think we should be fine. You know, I, I think two years ago, there was a lot of pressure, uh, specifically uh, more on one person, that, that being like Claude Love. Everybody was relying on Claude Love to come in, do the job, and maybe carry the team through regionals. But you just mentioned the uh, six guys, that really there's no one person that has to carry the load on this team. Sure. Usually it's a different guy every time out, and that's good. I mean, because you know, if you look at that lineup, you're not afraid to see the number seven guy coming up to bat in a pressure situation because you know that he can get a hit. Well, those, those guys, you know, they're, they're only hitting about, you know, 270, 280, 250, even at the, at the worst for the starters. So, yeah, everybody is doing the job. And also, if you go all the way around the defense, you look, everybody is going to be hitting the ball. Uh, Charlie Vaughn's hitting the ball. Claude Love, we know, is hitting the ball. Sure. Bronville's hitting the ball. Is there a weakness from the plate? No. Well, you know, the guys, we, we spoke to the guys about the offensive, uh, if, if there's any offensive woes perhaps, they said there's no offensive problems whatsoever. As a matter of fact, they're looking forward to going and having a good offensive showing. We went to the NSU baseball complex and spoke to a couple of the members of the baseball team about what they think of their offensive chance. I think we have a lot of experience from still on the team from two years ago when we were at regionals. Um, hopefully that'll come through for us. It was very, very emotional series when we went up there for regionals years ago and uh, hopefully the experience of myself, Claude Love, Groenfeld, Garrity and uh, the guys who are left on the team, hopefully that'll come through and, and play a big part in, in us winning the regional. Well, I have total confidence in everybody on my team, but I'm not going to just bow my head to, these, to the rest of the guys down at the regional tournament because they're pretty good players too to be getting as far as we have. But uh, I really, we're going to come out on top no matter what. A few guys have been struggling lately as far as hitting goes, but Everybody is. Uh, we have six players heading over 300. And as long as we can keep that going and the people who are struggling, if they come alive, I think we'll go very far and maybe even go to the national championship in Iowa. Oh, we're all very confident in, uh, in the way we're playing the game right now. And uh, things we can't get overconfident. And if we keep playing the way we're playing right now, we'll be, we'll be just fine. But everybody's got to keep, keep their heads in place. We just got to look positive at things. And uh, that way, we can probably hit together as a team and then go from there. You know, as long as we play to our capability, you know, we can hang with any team and beat any team. I hope that's the way it is. I hope we go up there and play our best baseball because uh, this is the regionals. This is where we get our exposure. This is where people say Nova Southeastern University is a good baseball team and has a great baseball program. And uh, hopefully we'll go up there and play our best and we will show no weakness. Our line is pretty solid, you know, when, when some guys slump. The other guys get the job done, but I, I really can't tell you. I mean, there could be some teams out there that have a better nine than we can, but we can play better than they. So, you know, it's up for grabs. Well, offense isn't a problem with this team. We know that. And let's talk about pitching. Not saying that that's a problem because pitching is certainly, if anything on this team is not a problem, pitching is not a problem. No, it's not. I mean, you've got the big three starters. you got Anschut, Zitnik, Suarez. You can go to the middleman and Matt Bennett and then bring in John Hassel to close it out. We're strong pitching. How big is that going into the regional playoffs and, and hopefully national tournament, Pat? I mean, it, it's got to be huge with the staff we have. Sure. I mean, they hold opponents to about maybe under three runs a game with the combined ERA. Batting average against is like about 220. So teams aren't going to score a lot of runs against us. And, you know, worries on, on the team with, with the pitching staff. You're not going to have it with us. I mean, other teams, they may be going into this tournament saying, oh, look, we got games on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Who are we going to throw on that third day or, or even the fourth day? 
We don't have that problem. No, I don't think so, especially knowing that you could probably bring, bring Felipe Suarez back after a couple of days rest, or if need be, you could start John Hassel. He's done it in the past this season with great success. So we've got really four starters if we needed to. All right, so let's go down the Nova Southeastern University staff. Start off with Ryan Anschutz, the year he's had. Sure, he's had a great year. Ryan's a real aggressive pitcher. But he's got 90 strikeouts. He goes right at hitters. So, I mean, he gets guys out. When, when he's on, you know, look out. Dan Zinnick coming back from last year's injury. How's he looking this year going into the playoffs? Really good. And he's getting his velocity back. And when he has his velocity, he's really tough on hitters. What about Felipe Suarez? Felipe's had a great year. What, 10 wins, like a 2.5 ERA. So, he, you know, when he's out there, the team is so confident that, you know, Felipe's on the hill. We got a great shot today. Well, the team is confident. And these guys are confident, especially when they know that they have good middle reliever in Matt Bennett and the closer right behind them in John Hassel. Sure. Uh, talk about Matt Bennett. I mean, here's a guy that came on our show last month. We talked about his injury that almost ended his career last month. Where does he look now as we go into the playoffs? Stronger and stronger every outing. And uh, I think with a, you know, a little rest leading up to the regionals, he should be fine coming into that. And John Hassel? Talk about this guy. Yeah. What do you say? He's got 14 saves, two away from an NAIA record. He's got to be one of the best closers in NAIA. Throws right up about 90 miles an hour. So, I mean, he's tough on those guys coming in in the late innings. So there just really has to be no worries then when uh, this pitching staff takes to the mound? I don't think there's many. Maybe if we have to get deeper into middle relief, but, I mean, if we don't have to do that, I think we're, we're real solid. Well, I'll tell you, these guys are primed. They're ready to go. The pitching staff is ready. The guys behind them are ready. I mean, let's face it, we spoke to these these guys at the NSU Baseball Complex, and they really want to get it going. Out the NSU Baseball Complex, the guys are indeed confident about their pitching staff. Let's hear what the pitchers had to say. We're uh, we're all pretty confident. I mean, I with two outs, ground ball hit. You know, I'm pretty much walking back to the dugout. That's how confident I am. You know, it's just we have a strong team. They all work hard out here. They're all here before getting their ground balls. So we all feel you know pretty confident in our team. I think our pitching staff can match up with anybody in the region. Uh, we don't, we don't have just one or two guys and go out there and do the job. We got a guy to come in after the first guy. We got a guy to close a game. We have a guy for three and four games into it. So we got a pretty strong staff, and I don't think anybody's going to overbeat us in that uh, aspect of the game. The pitching looks good. The hitting looks good. Next, let's hear what the head baseball coach has to say right after these messages on NSU Sports Beat. It takes so little to save our rivers and oceans for future generations. If we use less toxic household cleaners, we protect a little. Fewer lawn care chemicals, a little more. And recycling used motor oil gains us so much. In fact, there are many things we can do in our everyday lives that can help stop water pollution forever. Clean water. If we all do a little, we can do a lot. Brought to you by the Natural Resources Defense Council and the Ad Councils of the U.S. and Japan. Someone out there needs help, and you've decided to save them. Every year, thousands of people die waiting for organ and tissue transplants. To be a donor, even if you've signed something, you must tell your family now so they can carry out your decision later. Otherwise, it's like throwing a 12-foot rope to someone who's 15 feet away. Share your life. Share your decision. Which child deserves to be read to? This one? Or is it this one? Which child will learn to use a toothbrush? Who will have a chance to sing? The choice is yours. Volunteer for Head Start. With your help, more low-income preschool children can get what other children already have. Change the world of a child, and you change the world. One, two, one, two. Larry, you know, this simple exercise can help you stay healthy, which keeps medical costs down. But you gotta do it every day, Vince. Whoa! <laughs> or you'll get out of shape fast. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Welcome back to round two of NSU Sports Beat. Mike Laderman here now with head baseball coach Sonny Hansley. And Sonny, you got to be real pleased as this team goes into the regional championships and trying for the national championship simply because they're looking real good right now. We have a pretty good team, Mike. We've played very well during the, the regular season to win a conference championship, which automatically qualified us for the regional tournament. And that was our goal. 
Uh, the conference tournament would be very difficult. We have six teams in that, and so we felt that in order to make it a little easier on ourselves, we needed to, to win a regular season, and we went out and did that. You guys also want to show that last year was a fluke in, in that so, uh, the Knights lost eight out of nine, just surprisingly played unlike Nova Ball, and, and went down to Homestead and, you know, two and out. That's, that's not Nova Ball. This year, though, they, they seem very hungry in that they want to show last year was a fluke, and this year possibly going uh, further than ever before. Well, I think you have to look to the seniors who have done a great job from the, the, uh, their in returning players. The seniors obviously are the leaders, and they were there two years ago in the regionals, and they've pretty much uh, taught the younger players what it takes to win, and I think that's what's happened. We've got some young players that have played great, and our leaders uh, from the senior side have done an outstanding job also. Well, talk a little bit about that experience uh, that, that you mentioned. I mean, two years ago, they go to the regional tournament. These are guys that were there. They had the first taste of it then. Are they hungry now coming back into this uh, next regional trip? I think once you get there, one of the things that happens is that you've been there and sometimes you assume that you're always going to get back there. And that doesn't always happen. So what we did in the fall, we talked about the taste that was in their mouth when we played there and how much fun it was and the recognition that they all received. And they worked real hard off season. They worked hard in the fall, and you know they're they're really benefiting from all their hard work now, and, and it's really a, a credit to them. You know, Pat and I talked about uh, the hitting, talked about the great pitching. How there's really not that many worries as this team goes into the postseason. Do you have that many worries as the head coach? When you get into the playoffs, like we're going to go into right now, the teams that are going to be there are all going to have quality pitching. Um, and the old adage that good pitching stops good hitting is, is always true in these tournaments. So we have to be good on, the, on our side, from the pitching side, and defensively. And we'll score runs when the opportunity presents itself. So we need to be prepared, and that's what we've been practicing and doing our practices, getting ready for the tournament. Is the attitude fine, though? Are they ready? Do they want it? I think the attitude's great. They've been, they're really ready to get to, to the tournament and start playing and, and see how far we can go. I'll tell you, I agree, because uh, when I went out there uh, with the cameras, these guys seemed primed indeed to go to the regional championships and possibly nationals. And when we brought the cameras out to the NSU baseball complex, we spoke to the team, and they are hungry. Hopefully at regionals, we'll see a lot of the teams that we saw when we were there two years ago. Um, the caliber of play is, is a lot better than it is in the Forest Lund Conference at times because all the teams are stepping up and they want to go to the next level to the uh, World Series. So hopefully we'll do very well at regionals and uh, go our first uh, World Series. I believe this year we can win regionals. Uh, this team's a little bit better than the team two years ago. We gel a lot more as a team. We get the job done all around. Everybody picks each other up. I don't see why we won't walk out of there in first place. I think in the regionals we can do very well as long as we play the baseball we've been playing all year. Lay down the bunts when we have to lay them down and get the two out clutch base hits as we've been doing all year. It's going to come down to the middle relief. We know our starters. We have confidence in our starters. As long as our starters take us you know, into the seventh inning, sixth, seventh inning strong, we need to get our middle relief in as quick as possible to save us for the later, the later games on that week. Well, I might think we're going to do real well if uh, our pitching and hitting uh, mixes together. I think that we can go all the way. There's not many teams that's going to be able to beat us when uh, we mix those two elements together. Uh, I think we have a real good chance at regionals. Uh, keep working hard and keep our goals on beyond regionals, and I think that we can, we can make a good place in there and move on from there. We talk about the baseball team's success, the chances they have to go into the regionals and winning it, the chances they have to go into nationals. Here's another team that has the chance, and the head coach that could take them there, head coach Robin Handler of the women's softball team. Robin, you guys set some serious goals before this year as to how you wanted to, to get 30 wins, you wanted to get to the sectional. Look at this. You're doing exactly what you wanted. Is this uh, just part of the Robin Handler plan? Well, we're, we're doing well for, for a young program. This is our third year that, that we've had a program. Each year we've set goals and each year we've attained those goals. So it's just natural that we set three goals. Uh, the goals was over 30 wins to win our conference and, and to get to the regional tournament. Uh, since we've met all our, our goals each three years, this is just natural that we've, we've done that this year also. You know, if you look at the stuff that's on paper, I mean, the, the next goal would, of course, be to get to nationals and win it. And that year would say, well, you'd say, well, year four you could do that because year one, you know, was 18 and 16. Year, year two of the program was last year in which you guys, you know, got what you wanted to do. You got over the 20 wins and, and you made it to the championship game of the sectional. This being year three, you said th those goals. Year four is supposed to be the year, but this year the team could actually do it. You could, you could skip a hurdle and get over there, don't you think? Well, why wait one year when we can do it this year? Uh, instead of saying that icing on the cake is getting to nationals, I think that we need to re refocus our goals and reset a goal to be successful at regionals. 
we have a great chance of, of coming out of the region and, and going to nationals. Uh, we've already had teams come down here from the region and scout us out to see how we're playing. So they are considering us a force and they are considering us a threat. We just need to go in there uh, with our heads on straight and, and just to go out there strong and, and give the showing that we can do. As long as we play up to our potential, then we don't have to wait till next year because we'll be there this year. Well, let's go along those lines uh, with the head on straight. That's the attitudes of this team. And I, I say it all the time, when this team wants it, they could really pummel any team that they want. Uh, how big are the attitudes going to be when you get up to Alabama for the regional championships? Right now, the, the attitudes are strong. The attitudes are positive. They spend, they spend their days making cookies for each other. They, <laughs> they spend their days making posters. Uh, last year, when we went up to sectionals, and uh, we wound up losing a tough game, all night, all they did was sit up and talk about how they are going to beat that team the next day, how they were going to do it, how they were going to hit, how they were going to play. And right now, they've already started talking about how they're going to go up to regionals and be successful, how they're going to play, uh, what movies we're going to watch on the VCR, on the bus. Uh, they're ready. Oh, I believe they're ready, too. I mean, I haven't seen their attitudes this high up all year long. And the best part is the girls know they're ready as well. We went out and we spoke to the ladies at the A.D. Griffin Sports Complex. Here's what they had to say about their attitudes. Emotion is a very big part of our game. If everyone comes out with the attitude to win, we have a very good chance of winning. But when we come out here low key, we have a hard time picking up after, after the first and second inning. So I think emotion is a very big part of the game. This team has got more emotions than I've ever seen in my entire life. And when I first got here, that was one of the things that was hard for me to understand with this team. When we were down, we were way down. But when we were up, we were way up. <laughs> no one could beat us. Emotions are very crucial when heading into the playoffs because um, if you're down and you're not into the games and stuff, your team gets down. And the higher your emotions, the better you play. If you're into the games, if you're excited and you're well aware of what's going on, you play much better. Well, we sort of changed our attitude since the beginning of the season. We've brought a lot of intensity onto the field, um, which means we've been beating a lot of teams because of this intensity. So that's kind of a problem if we get down, down on ourselves and probably not going to do as good unless we have that intensity. But we have a chance of going into nationals, so there's going to be a lot of emotions. But as long as we stay positive, keep our personal lives out of the field, and being focused, and we'll do great. Definitely. I think when one of us goes out and gives a thousand percent, everyone else wants to go out and do the same thing. And that's when it just, it's like a domino effect. I think the team thrives a lot on emotion, because um, if one player gets down, it seems to have a domino effect, like everybody else wants to get down too. So if everybody's up, everybody stays up. You know, we talk about the attitudes with this softball team, and I say all the time just how good they are. Robin, we know they're a great team already. We know that they're a multi-talented team, but they got some serious leaders on this team, too, both you know, uh, vocally, but they lead on the field more so than anything. That's Shannon Sawyer and Heidi Wickham. I mean, great years for both of them. Talk about Heidi first off. Well, Heidi comes in after taking a year off. She took last year off to concentrate on her studies, and then she decided that she missed the sport so much that she wanted to come back and play again. So we brought her here from Utah, and Heidi's doing everything and more. Uh, she can bunt and get on and base hit. She can hit it out of the park. Uh, she comes in with about 19 stolen bases. Defensively, people won't even round first base on her because she's been picking runners off first base from left out field. Out left field. Mm -hmm. Just chucking uh, all the way to first base. She already has a couple out from there. Uh, she's gunned out people at second base. This is a pure All-America candidate also a Division I player, correct? She could be. She could be, but she's also never played left field before until she came to our program. She's always played shortstop. She was a uh, four-time All-State shortstop in Utah. She wound up at a junior college, uh, also played shortstop, and when she came out here, uh, I put her in the outfield uh, for some leadership and, and to pick up what needed to be picked up, and, and she's just come on strong and done everything that's, that's needed to be done. Talk about Shannon Sawyer now. 18-1 and one regular season record. Here's a pitcher that, you know, you, you see her and you're like, can she match up against the best? And she does, day in and day out. An incredible record. She has great location on her pitches, and the defense seems to look really comfortable when she's in there. Shannon, people tend to underestimate Shannon. They come in and they see that she's not throwing smoke. She doesn't throw the fastest fastball. But the key to college softball is not how fast you throw, it's how, how far it moves. Shannon's curveball can break a foot on, on a good day. And she just puzzles batters because she's consistent. She went 
an eight game streak without walking a batter. She puts the ball where it needs to be and, and she's a smart player. She covers the middle. Uh, the defense plays really well behind her and uh, I think she even surprised herself this year. All right, so with Heidi Wickham, with Shannon Sawyer, with the rest of the team that you got, let's face it, you got a solid team everywhere in this lineup. How good can this team do? How, how far can they go this year? You got regionals coming up, possibly nationals. Any prediction? Prediction, I say we're gonna, they want it. Uh, they're gonna play hard. They're gonna go out and do everything they can to go out and achieve to a regional victory and, and get themselves to national. They want it and they're gonna go out and do it. All right, well, when we come back from this break, the good Dr. Pat Feely and myself will dissect the softball team's chances and the baseball team's chances right after these messages. information about how you can help stop domestic violence, call us. He protects all living things in the forest. But he can't do it alone. Please don't play with matches. Put out your campfires. And never, ever forget the words of Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Hey, welcome back to round three of NFC Sports Meet. Mike Laderman back here with the good Dr. Pat Feely. Welcome back, Pat. I hope you enjoyed your little vacation. I did. We're still talking softball, women's softball for the Mighty Knights in Nova Southeastern. And we're, let's get back still on this Heidi Wicken bandwagon. I mean, Coach Handler and I talked about her. Let's me and you now dissect her. I mean, offensively, this is a player who's hit not below 400 all year long. She's been in the high 400s this entire season. She is so consistent offensively, and that's because she can do everything. I mean, she can hit for power. She had three home runs in four games. She can bunt for a base hit, she can slap hit, she can steal bases. So she's so consistent offensively, she's going to be on base. She's the spark, too. Uh, well, I guess when you mention a spark, though, like we, we talked off camera, Melissa Carrier, though, too, is a spark. I mean, the, the leadoff hitter, when she gets on, she's all the way around. Yeah, I mean, she gets on, however she gets on, either by a bunt or a walk or however, she's going to steal second and third almost every time. So she's on third base just like that. And still the, the, the second uh, hitter, Lenore Gorecki, she's, she's still up by the time Melissa gets to third. So, I mean, this is going to keep uh, going on at regionals, which is what everybody expects, I think, because it, it's been this, this way all year long. By the time Lenore gets up, you got Melissa on third, smack base hit or anything in the outfield, the Mighty Knights are up one nothing already. Sure. And then you have the, the meat of the order yet to come up. So, I mean, they're, they're a great offensive team. Well, talk about the meat of the order. I mean, Sherry Waddell's been hitting really well. Kim Eason's hitting well. Shannon Sawyer's hitting well. Julie Levy's hitting well. Mercedes Orozco is hitting well. Lenore Gorecki's hitting well. Is there a player that's not starting to hit the, the ball well? No. I mean, one through nine, they're, they're solid offensively. Every one of them can hit. I mean, they got three or four that can hit for power. They've got the others that can slap the, the base hit or bunt for a base hit. So they're well-rounded. And there's a good bench, too. I, I mean, look, Steph Bauma could come in. She's been swinging the bat well. Uh, Christy Hawley's been hitting the ball. I mean, this is, this is a team with a batting average that, that's around 300. Yeah, a little over 300. Yeah, so, I mean, that's solid all the way through. And these same players, let's look at the defensive side of things. I mean, this is a group of ladies that has just not made that many errors at all this year. No, they don't. And when they do make an error, usually it might be a mental error. They might throw to the wrong base or give away a base. But, uh, any, I mean, they feel fantastic. That infield, nothing gets by them. Well, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of interchangeable parts, too, on this defense, and I think that's what makes it great, and I think the ladies know that, and that when somebody, you know, isn't doing that well in their defensive position, somebody else is going to stop in there. We talked to the ladies at A.D. Griffin Sports Complex and asked them their thoughts just about their interchangeable defense. Our defense is the best out there. We have the best depth. Anybody can take each other's position if they needed to. That's what wins. Defense wins, and we'll definitely win. I think our defense is really strong, especially because we have so many people who can play so many different positions. And um, it keeps us really competitive with each other because I know if I don't come through, someone's going to replace me. It makes me work harder. We have many players sitting on the bench and on the field that can cover any position in the field. We have two first basemen, three pitchers. We have a lot of mobility out there. 
Well, when it comes to the defensive part of this team, everybody's good at what they do and they can play any position that they want because everybody's that talented. With all this talent we have, we just put it together and we're going to win anything, regionals, nationals. You know, the great thing about this softball team is that now they really know just how good they are. And I expect some really good things out of this softball team going to Alabama. I would think so. I mean, they have all the components. They got the pitching, the hitting, defense, team speed. I mean, they've got it all. And it sounds like you just described the baseball team as well. I mean, they're looking just as good. Pat, what do you think the chances are realistically? I think both have a great shot to win the regional. Well, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, we're going to be taking a test. What's the question? Can they do it? I think they could do it. You think they could do it? Now the question is, do you think they could do it? Well, to get the answer to the test, we can't find out until the next show. But until then, I'm Mike Laterman. This is Dr. Pat Feely. And the rest of the NSU gang, we thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Be good. <laughs>